What is going on, Jerome's? So, Daddy didn't watch the preseason game last night in real time. It was a documentary shot in real time uh, because uh, undisclosed location and ooh, you and me going fishing. So, the the best thing about fishing with people who don't like to take home their fish is that you get to take home their fish. It's all, all, all that. So, uh, you know, got a nice walleye, got a couple of nice perch. So, we're making soup because I'm Asian. There, there we go. But uh, still re- recapping, uh, got up this morning for whatever reason. Watch the the the, the DVR version on YouTube TV, and I was just like, ah, "Why?" Uh, that's when you know that you've reached peak. What am I doing with my life on this beautiful, blessed Sunday morning? Taking time to rewatch a preseason game, but we, we have winners and losers from the game. There you go. So, winner number one, Lewis Seen. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, he did miss the gap. He, he did get hurdled by Tajay Spears for the touchdown. It sort of is what it is. But uh, Lewis Seen made some great plays, great tackles, got himself a sack. And the whole thing about Lewis Seen, he's, he's going to stack bodies, but he also needs to learn how to wrap up. Yeah, a little bit more tackling technique, uh, and he'll be good to go. Made a great play on uh, Malik Willis down near the goal line as well. It didn't allow him to get in, which, I don't know. Like, when have the Vikings ever stopped a running quarterback? I mean, it goes back to Michael Vick and, and then uh, Justin Fields and RG3 on that legendary run. Steve Young uh, back in the day. Great, great. Uh, winner number two, Ivan Pace Jr. So, Pace, Pace is going to start. You know, the whole talk about him uh, sending past uh, Brian Osma on the depth chart, which is fine, even though I, I think that they do play disparate positions uh, in terms of off-ball linebacker, but it's a discussion for another day. I, I do think that Ivan Pace Jr. will be on the field starting week one, uh, wore the green dot uh, for the second game in a row, I lined up the defense, I got himself two pressures. Also, he got more involved in in blitzes and stunts and got pressures, brought heat, uh, and maintained gap discipline. So he really is he really is a standout. Like number forty, soon to be number zero, but number forty, uh, it really it really is clear that he's up here and the second team defense is down here. But uh, he's that guy. And Najee Thompson is also that guy. So uh, he's Dan Jacena who can tackle, and he's just. Uh, amazing at getting free uh, on uh, as a punt gunner, and also, do you notice that the Titans were double teaming him? That's how much respect he already has, and he still beat it, uh, and he still got a great tackle uh, on uh, Wright's 56-yard punt. I did have a minor injury, but uh, should be good to go. But I, I think that he's a guy that is going to make the 53 uh, as a special teamer. you love to see it, man. Uh, Ty Chandler. So black and white stats in the box score, not great. You know, 24 yards on 11 carries, but I think that really was more about the second-team offensive line. Uh, but – uh, did have some nice wiggle, uh, did have uh, a couple of nice pass protection reps. I think he's clearly the running back, too, uh, for the Vikings uh, behind Alexander Madison. Uh, quarterback Nick Mullins, winner number five. So he had his ups and downs, but I think a lot of that was more on the second-team offensive line that he was under duress uh, all damn day long. Uh, but overall, 13-23 uh, for 151, uh, had some accuracy issues and was skittish at times, but also stood in the pocket and dropped some dimes. So uh, I think it was a bit of a mixed bag. And I, I would give him – I still think he's firmly quarterback too. I mean, Jaron Hall is still more of a work in progress. But I think that if Mullins – Knocking on all the wood. Hopefully he never sees the field. Uh, but if he did have to step in with the first team offense, I, I think that he could be a steward uh, of the uh, of the offense going forward. Uh, number six, uh, uh, dual winners, the backup tight ends, Nick Muse, as well as Ben Sims. Uh, Muse caught a touchdown against Seattle, uh, added three for 46 uh, against the Titans. Uh, ben Sims, the UDFA uh, out of Baylor, uh, had some great blocks uh, on top of two for 28. Uh, so overall, really nice uh, day for the uh, backup tight ends. Uh, then you got uh, Jaron Hall at seven. So, again, it's tough to assess him uh, with the second and third team offensive line. But four of seven for 49, uh, 78.9 quarterback rating, a ran for 14, including a nice scamper for a first down. Uh, one of I think his best throw was uh, one of the incompletions where immediate pressure and he sidestepped it to the left and uh, going to his left, he dropped a beautiful dime uh, in between two defenders to Thayer Thomas on third and forever. Uh, Thomas ultimately didn't come up with it, but 
Uh, I, that was a great throw. Uh, it, it was a big time throw in a big time spot, and it's something that you can build on. Where you know Jaron Hall hasn't been consistent uh, like you would like uh, in preseason, but there, there's flashes uh, of potential uh, that that does get you excited. Uh, number eight. So even though Thayer Thomas didn't come up with that one, I think that he did show really well. I, I like how he operates, especially when he's in the slot. I think that he uh, could be in the mix for the future punt returner. Uh, uh, Brandon Powell got all, all those reps uh, last night. Uh, but Thomas is a guy that I've liked throughout this entire process, uh, and, and then we'll see where it just goes uh, from there. And freeze. There you go. Uh, winner number nine, uh, Aaron Dykes. So the pride of Richmond, who just signed with the team like a handful of days ago, handled all the kick return duties, uh, busted out a 38-yarder, had a couple of nice uh, carries uh, deep in the second half. And for for the Vikings, I mean, the running back room right now, Kenne, who knows what's going to happen with him. I don't even have... I don't even have Dykes listed, uh, but I, I like his chances a lot more than Abram Smith. Uh, maybe he ends up as uh, uh, that extra running back on the practice squad. Uh, Dwayne McBride uh, had himself a pretty nice evening, so uh, had his first NFL touchdown. Uh, also a man size run uh, on his catch converting in the third down, so you, you do like to see that. And you know, we saw in the first preseason game, it wasn't really much uh, as a running back as well as he definitely wasn't much as a kick returner, but uh, I think that he settled in nicely. And even though his touchdown run was you know, a one-yard dive, I think he showed some nice uh, patience as well as uh, a nice little bounce uh, to be able to find the end zone there. Uh, winner number 11, so Troy Dye. Uh, had himself interception, and what's interesting is that it was off of a bluff look. So it looked like, man, he dropped in the zone, uh, confused the quarterback, and he did a nice job reeling that thing in. I, I don't like that he's wearing gloves now. I mean, that, that was a great thing about Troy Dye. Just, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my hands, just wearing no gloves. Wear, I was thinking about this. Like, beyond quarterbacks and sometimes centers, everyone wears gloves. It's strange. Anyways, uh, winner number 12, uh, safety Theo Jackson. Now, uh, you could put uh, Jay Ward in there as well. Jay Ward had six tackles and did have one miss, but, you know. Uh, but uh, Theo Jackson started, had an injury scare with his arm. Uh, overall looked uh, re- really good. And I think that he, I, I think Theo Jackson and Jay Ward are competing over one roster spot right now because uh, I think they'll carry five safeties on the 53 uh, with, with how uh, Flores wants to operate. And one will be on the practice squad, and one will probably be be called up from the practice squad several times. Uh, winner number 13, uh, edge rusher Benton Whitley. So, didn't really show up in the box score, uh, but he did uh, you know, He did start uh, opposite of Luigi Villane on the edge. Uh, got a number of pressures on Willis, just simply couldn't close the deal. Uh, but you know, pressures are, are important because it means that you're getting at-bats. But uh, they can be tough with uh, mobile quarterbacks like Willis where, I mean, if you miss – I mean, they're, they're going to run, and that's exactly what Willis did, racking up 90-plus yards on the ground. Uh, but overall, I mean, Weaver show, uh, Curtis Weaver has shown some potential. Uh, it, it is going to see Whitley showing a little something there. You know, Carter II uh, was also in the mix, too. Uh, but the Vikings, I mean, could the Vikings go 8-9 deep at that rusher? It's certainly uh, a possibility. Sheldon Day had himself a nice day. Uh, strip sack as well as drew a holding call on fourth down. Um, so overall, just really fantastic uh, evening for him. And then you got uh, Greg Joseph, three for three. That's right. It, uh, apparently, it was a mistake uh, letting go of uh, Pod Lesney. But mm. uh, Ryan Wright. So he did shank one punt, but overall a pretty good night for him. Uh, average of 48, long of 56, uh, thanks to Najee Thompson, which, I mean, if you have a, a, a punter in Ryan Wright who not only can kick it long, but also can kick it accurate, keep it in the field of play, uh, not uh, put it through the back of the end zone, and then you got a punt gunner like Najee Thompson, I mean, that's that's really good. That's really good for the Vikings punting unit, which hopefully we'll never see on the field. Uh, and then Brian Flores, so lots of looks, lots of bluffs, lots of blitzes, lots of disguises. And this is the preseason defense. You know, imagine what it's going to be like uh, in the regular season. Yeah, but um, can you stop a running quarterback? Uh, can, can you stop uh, the backup running back? Uh, a, little, a little bit rough. All right, so uh, moving on to not so much winners. 
And uh, it was a really rough night for Ole Udo. And it's strange where Ole Udo has really struggled in the last two preseason games. Uh, and what's interesting is that he's at his natural position of right tackle. He wasn't a guard, he wasn't a left tackle, but right tackle he can operate. And when he filled in for Brian O'Neill after O'Neill popped his Achilles at the end of last season, Ole Udo played really damn good, man. So I don't know what's happening, but back-to-back sacks allowed against backups, back-to-back penalties, it's just, I don't know. And you remember the year that Ole played guard, where it was just penalty, drive killer, penalty, drive killer, over and over. It just wasn't good. It really wasn't. Uh, Vidarian Lowe had himself a rough day as well. Uh, the second team offensive line overall was bad, uh, but left to right it was Vidarian Lowe, uh, UDFA Allen Ali, uh, Schlutman, Brandel, uh, and Udo, and they just did not look good. And it could be a chemistry issue. It could be a whatever. But second and third team offensive line uh, were just booty. And Mullins and Jaron Hall play, paid the price all damn day. Uh, Vikings run defense, uh, 281 yards uh, allowed on the ground. The stri- got to drive Brian Flores nuts. Uh, Julius Chestnut uh, went off for 98, uh, brother of Joey. Uh, Malik Willis went for 90. Again, running quarterbacks always been the Achilles heel. Uh, quarterback uh, Andrew Boo Jr., I just don't know what it is, man. Uh, but missed tackles, missed assignments, and I mean, he, he's a first-round talent. He was a high second-round pick, and he's struggling against guys who are. Oh, it's gonna be a long shot for them to make the practice squad. I, I just don't get it, man. Penalties were rough, six for thirty-five. Uh, a little bit sloppy and undisciplined at times. Uh, wide receiver Tristan Jackson and Blake Prohl, they each had some big-time drops. Prohl had two back-to-back. It was just, I don't know, like, I love me some Tristan Jackson, um, but yeah, that, that, that drop, you can't have that, man. And, and with Prohl, I mean, Prohl was supposed to be the favorite son, uh, but didn't look great in Seattle, definitely did not look great against the Titans. And if there was 75-man cut still, I think Prohl would, would be one of them. Mm. Uh, and then lastly, Kevin O'Connell calling timeout, <laughs> just extending the game. It's like, well, I, I wasn't even watching it in real time, but I, I, I assume people will go nuts on that, but you know, so it is what it is, but, uh, that's it. That's it. Uh, that's, uh, Vikings Titans recap. We got winners and, uh, n- not, not so much winners. Uh, let us know yours, uh, in the comment section below, subscribe for daily Vikings takes, want to support the work, put a little something in the Venmo, but to next time, skull production value.